just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another Packer Up, boys. And it's time for the ritual. There it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's it. That is it. Uh, as usual, guys, you're cruising home or you're about to cruise home. Just put the, put the troubles aside, baby. Put the troubles aside. You're just a human being. You're just a human being floating on a rock through the infinite masses of space. Put them aside, baby. It's the weekend. Enjoy it. If you can't give that to yourself, what are you going to give to yourself? What can you give to others? <laughs> if you can't give yourself a bit of happiness, how can you give it to others? Sit Bloody back, life. enjoy if you're healthy. Your partner's healthy. Your kids are healthy. It's not too bad. Uh, now, let's get straight into it. First of all, I want to give a shout out to Aspley Mazda, the big dogs up in Brisbane. So first of all, a while ago, they took care of me. They helped me out with getting the wife a car. So I got the wife a car and they were fantastic. And we love, we literally love the car. I think it's a CX-5, pretty sure. Um, and so I was like, I was so stoked with the process, so stoked with the Mazda. I went and got myself a little, a little whippet, little <laughs> Mazda three whipping around Sydney City. Uh, matter of fact, I loved Astley, Astley Mazda so much. I literally flew up to get the car from there and drove back myself. Um, so thank you to Astley Mazda. Um, really, really appreciate. It's just good what they do. And I bought the car, guys. This is not a like I didn't get the car for free or anything. <laughs> so don't think that it's just a genuine share that Astley Mazda. They were fantastic to deal with. Um, but you know what's crazy? And I'd even, I didn't realise it until I was literally in the car. Mm. In the car, I'm sitting there looking around like, father out, this is nice. Like, it's a Mazda 3, so I was like, no. Yeah, of course. But I'm still sitting there going, fire, this is nice. I didn't grow up with money. Yeah. And then I realised it hit me. This is my first ever new car. 36 years old. Oh, there you go. First ever new car. 30, and I was like, you know what? Be, you did all right for yourself, yeah. mate. <laughs> you fucking did all right for yourself. It took 36 years to get your first ever new car. <laughs> But because I only ever had a Honda Civic yeah. and a Holden Cruze, and obviously they were both second hand. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm I'm the same. I've never I've never bought a new car. Yeah, Very close. So the the first new car I ever bought was for the wife, which like shows you that I'm fucking husband of the year or whatever. <laughs> Doesn't I mean we don't need to talk about the fact that I'm a fucking incredible husband <laughs> and also going to be the best dad in the history of the universe. We don't need to talk about that, or don't need to talk about that. Um, but yeah, so shout out to Aspley, mate. The drive was beautiful. You know, it's funny, and I text the boys this, but. Mm. I was like, this drive, because it dropped, it was straight after the dropping of the Origin teams. Yeah, yeah on Monday, yeah. I reckon, and like, I'm not even exaggerating, because I did a podcast in the car as oh, well. That was great. So I was in the zone. I reckon I, I thought about these selections for like three or four hours, and I didn't get any closer to any clarity as to what was going on. It was funny, like, watching the, the, the group chat, like, later in the night when you must have stopped in coughs or whatever, and I was, I think I might have been editing or something, so my phone, I wasn't, like, on my phone, and I just... Like, no, you know when you get, like, a group message and you've got, like, 20 messages and you're like, oh, everyone's talking? They were just all from Dennett. Yeah, and I don't <laughs> usually message. <laughs> it's just Dennett with all his thoughts, all sorts of guru was obviously busy. Yeah. I was doing my thing. Timmy's like, in oh bloody my. England going, Timmy's in England. this guy. <laughs> so Dennett's just, just absolutely venting. And, and this is how extreme it is. I'm not in any group chats with anyone. Like, yeah. so I don't go back and forth. I'm not a texter. Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just like, I'm just, look, if we're, unless we're talking about something important, I don't care how your day was. I'm just yeah, going to no, be honest. We're straight to the point. If you're not, if you're not my wife, don't care how your day was. Yeah. Just going to be straight up. Mm. Get it done. Just mm. get it done. Now, maybe that's fucking selfish. I don't know. But I'm, I want to talk about stuff that matters. Yeah. And what matters is origin selection. Origin and rugby league. It is funny. Like the wife, whenever I get home, she's like, oh, yeah, how was your day? You know, yeah, good, good. She's like, yeah, what'd you get up to? I'm just like, don't want to talk about it. Hey, eh? like. Yeah, went to work. You know what I mean? Like the <laughs> yeah. same stuff that I did. But like women, they want to talk about this yeah, stuff. Yeah, I know. I know. Like, tell me about your day. And like, I'm a piece of shit, but I can't help it. I don't want to talk. I think I hit my quota of like words a day. Mm. They did a study, I'm pretty sure. And men have a certain amount of words they say a day compared to women. And it's like, can you Google it while I'm talking? Yeah. And so they're pretty sure they did a study and like men are, at, I don't know, let's just say, let's say 5,000 words a day. And women are like 10,000 a day because they're much more social creatures. Mm. And I swear I hit my limit and it's just... And so Sorry, so it's 20,000 for women and 7,000 for men. Boom, there you go. There you go. So what's crazy is like, even though I'm the wrong, that's my wife, she's been at home, she, I'm supposed to talk to her, of course. I mean, obviously I talk to her. <laughs> Jesus Christ, sound like a fucking, sound like I'm from the 1500s. Fucking, yeah. Um, but yeah, you get home and you just, you just, there's no words want to come out. Mm. No words want to come You need at least some zen. Give me 30 minutes. Yeah. Just to get me bearings. Yeah. Uh, oh, what's, the, what's the word we use at home? 
there's always like oh, it's probably an hour for me just yeah. to um unwind that's it just get me i need to get me bearings yeah whereas if i come in and i'm getting like pot shotted with questions left right and center yeah. rattles me i'm going just, getting there's a machine gun of questions coming at me how's your day what's the temperature what's going on with your big toe <laughs> what's the we're, temperature? We're like you know what i mean yeah. you're just getting smashed and you're just going oh, you know like rambo shooting someone blah, 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 those <laughs> questions uh and sometimes a little bit too much but what's worse oh about God. it is you know you're in the wrong like i'm in the wrong that's I know. my wife like, i'm I being should, a fuckwit yeah i'm a fuckwit yeah. but my biology my biology yeah. won't allow me not to be a fuckwit yeah exactly right it's just um, science it is just science so <laughs> Shout out to the wife. I just talked about how I was fucking husband of the universe. And <laughs> within, within six minutes. <laughs> realized that I'm actually not. I'm actually a piece of shit. Um, but yeah, so on the, just on the drive home, I'm just thinking like, okay. And I was like, you know what, boy? Like one of the texts was, you know what? They're not playing Gutho. This is, this is to throw off. They're going to put Spencer Linu in for Gutho spot. And they're, yeah. and they're doing that because like Linu is the like enforcer. So if they named him on the bench, all the articles would be about Spencer Linu going out and fighting someone. Yeah. And I was like, this is how deep I was getting guys. I know. <laughs> and then I was like, all right. The hour later, another message. I'm like, you know what? If they're going to play three Robson, they're actually going to play him in the middle like Ruben Cotter. And that's going to, that, that, this is how crazy I was getting in the mm. car. But uh, anyway, it was a good drive. It's a long drive. It's a long drive to, to do a lot of thinking. A lot of thinking. Uh, but yeah, it was a beautiful drive. Now, Beer, Food and Footy Festival. The Beer, Food and Footy Festival, Sunday. Uh, sorry, Saturday, the 22nd of July at Henson Park in Marrickville. Great afternoon combining beer and footy at Henson Park. Home of the famous Newtown Jets. They'll be playing Manly Reserve Grade. Guys, the tickets uh, link will be in the show notes. Get tickets before they sell out. This yeah. is old school. This is what rugby league was built on, literally. There's nothing better. It's the everything combined into one. You get to go out and try all like genuine locally made beers, yeah. all different types. Plus you get food, plus you get a good game of rugby league. Yeah. You get to sit on the hill. So make sure to buy tickets before they sell out. Uh, Henson it, Park's beautiful In Henson well. Park, it's one of the old school parks. Mm. Like one of the most old school, so it's a great place. Uh, also, big week for Bloke Lager. We are in special in celebrations. IJ and Porters, go in, grab a case, guys. We are the beer of rugby league. You know this. You know this. Uh, make sure to grab a case. We're in special, really big special. Celebrations, IGA Porters, in every New South Wales celebrations, IGA or Porters. Plus, we're also in every Liquor Legends in Queensland and every celebrations. Grab a case of Bloke beer, guys. It is the beer of rugby league. Now, before we get to anything, I want to talk about Mitch Marsh. Oh, I want to talk about him. Look, let's be honest, and this is going to come to a shock to everyone. I don't know much about cricket, <laughs> but what I do know is about being a fucking Aussie. Mm. And so there's this clip on the 28 year old male, and it is partnered with Kick It Forward podcast. And it's from 2019. So go check it out, or Maddie will put it on the potty. Yep. Yeah, most of Australia hate me. <laughs> um, Look, Australians are passionate. They love their cricket. Um, they want people to do well. It's no doubt that I've had a lot of opportunity at test level and I haven't quite nailed it, but hopefully they can respect me for the fact that I keep coming back and I love playing for Australia. I love wearing the baggy green cap and I'll keep trying and hopefully I'll win them over one day. <laughs> and go check it out because, so it's a Kick It Forward podcast that posted it. It's Mitch Marsh talking about how Australia doesn't like him in 2019 and he's had plenty of chances at cricket and hopefully Australia comes to like him because he's just going to keep turning up. And what is bloke all about? What's oh. our literal <laughs> <It's a> slogan? <laughs> slogan. Turn, turn up. up. And Mitch Maas, you're an absolute legend because you kept turning up and you won the hearts of his everywhere. First of all, it was almost... When you watch that 2019 clip, you go, far out, bro. Like, we don't not like you. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, I love the triumph of the fact that comes around, goes over to England, third, like the third match. Yeah. And, and he didn't play the first two. So he's yeah. come in. He's come in and we had a, a bad start, correct? Shocking start. Yeah. And he comes in, big swinging dick. You'd think a guy that thinks that Australia doesn't like him, little tiny, just <laughs> like free, like uh, cold, cold weather kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Warm no, no, weather no. kind of stuff for this bloke. Comes out, dominates, hits a century and just says, thank it was you for coming. A century in, it was a, he got 118 off 118 balls. So he went, oh. a, he went at a runner ball. It was just, it was brutal. Brutal kind of stuff. So, mate, does Australia oh. not like you? Are you serious? You're what Australia's all about. Absolutely. Fucking turning up. And just fucking having a dig. 
and you did it for the nation. So you're as Australians, they come. I love to see it. Uh, what did you think about the game so far over the night? I was actually overnight. watching it at the time, and um, so I turned it on pretty much as soon as the Sharkies game finished. So mm. It's just great timing. There was about 20 minutes to go before the lunch break, and I think Marsh had just come in, and he was just like, like when you, I think we were four for 80 or five for 80 or something, whatever it was. Like you're a bit nervous because you're like, fuck, like we need to get half decent score here. Smith's out, Warner's out, Uzi's out, Labuschagne's out. And Travis Head, who is our fast batsman, came in before him and Marsh just overtook him. Just just went bang, smashing people around the park. He absolutely smoked Mark Wood over midweek at who bowls freaking 150 Ks an hour. And like, and when he got, he was on 89 and you think, oh, all right, maybe he's a bit nervous. He's only scored two centuries, you know, he hasn't scored an Ashes century in England before, I'm pretty sure. Mm. Um, you know, is he going to be nervous? But not nah, just went bang four, bang six, bang single. And it was like he that uh, he was so criticised for his whole career and everyone everyone in Australia, in, in his mind, were off him. But the whole of Australia stood and applauded last night. It was absolutely fantastic. Social media was going absolute bananas. Um, so well done, Mitch Marsh. And love is shame. I got a, I got a, a little, uh, uh, got tagged in something. Okay. Got tagged in something. So a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about the fact that Uzi, is he a Queenslander or a New South Welshman? Mm. Uh, Marcus Lubbershane put up a post yeah. saying Queensland family. I did see that. I did and see guess that. Guess who was sitting <laughs> bang on in the middle of the photo. I don't know if it was in the middle, but let's just say it was. It was the great Uzi. Yep, I did see Usman that. Usman Khawaja. <laughs> The Queensland family, oh, okay, just playing for a club, is he? Looks like he's a Queenslander to me, and he chose to be a Queenslander. Yeah, that um, that photo really hurt. That, Queenslander. Yeah, that, come on, come yeah. on. So, look, I mean, I, look, if Tom and Eddie want to have a look at that photo, and you get back to me what you think about that photo, does that look like a New South Welshman? Looks like a Queenslander pretty, to me. It's pretty damning evidence. Looks uh, like a Queenslander. Yeah. Everyone's family's there as well. That's how deeply ingrained he is in the Queensland culture. That's a win. That's a win for the beak. Thank you. <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah, um, that's tough. As I always say, guys, don't listen to Hello Sport propaganda. <laughs> it is like communist fucking whatever communist country you want to say. That's what it's like in over at Hello Sport. They just are propaganda machine. Um, anyway, shout out Tom and Eddie. Love you. <laughs> Punters and dribbles page. Go give her a follow. Uh, and also, was it uh, breaking the yips? Give that a follow Breaking too. the yips. Yep. Uh, this podcast is obviously brought to you by our great mates over at Sportsbet. Try July, one of my favourite times of the year. Try July, where Sports uh, Sportsbet will donate money for each try celebration throughout the month. This year, Sportsbet will donate 5k for every try celebrations, and the money will go to Nathan Stapleton and Daniel Anderson. Uh, look, I know it wasn't a try, but it should have been a try because I don't understand how getting pushed in the back had anything to do with the knock-on that the West Tigers player did. But the great Nico Hines doing the shoey. Oh. And then the shaker leg, I'm pretty sure, yeah, after yeah, it. Yeah, the double. It, it, was, it was beautiful it stuff. It was so good. And it, I love that he struggled to take his boot off as well. Made it better. Yeah. You so don't want to, you don't want, because then it's like, bro, why are you playing with loose boots on? Yeah. Then you're like, but he is all business and then pleasure after. Yeah. So he had tight boots on. You knew he was there to play. Undid him, boom. Shuey into shaker leg. Doesn't get much better than that. It's good from Nico because I think it's always hard for the first team because you watch other teams do it and then you kind of remember. Yeah. But... And the Sharks actually historically, I actually spoke with Sportsbet. Historically, they are actually the best team at celebrating. Easy. They've got the fish one. They've got the yeah. wrestling one. Yeah. They've got plenty of good ones. They've got heaps of good ones. So maybe, obviously, there wasn't as many last night because it was the first game. And obviously, it's not front of mind. Yeah. But I, I'm glad Nico had the presence of mind to do it because yeah. it was fantastic. And I, look, I don't want to be... I um, don't want to be disrespectful, but I think it had a mixture of like the game was close and it was against the Tigers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So True. it's like, you know, the Sharks are in the gun. We should be... Having, we should have more points on the Tigers right now. Mm. So you don't want to be celebrating when you should already be out by, you mm. know, 20 or whatever. I wonder Whereas, if, sorry, I wonder if Sean Bloor kicking the ball 15 suburbs that way counted. No, no Talao, I think, did one. Pretty sure Talao, he got up and he like... Oh, yeah, like Talao that. did one, yeah. 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 Um, so, but anyway, we'll get into that match. But, yeah, yeah thanks to the legends over at Sportsbet. What a great cause. Uh, let's get into it. The RLPA. The RLPA. And the NRL have come to loggerheads uh, over, over, I don't know. I don't know. And that is the most frustrating thing is like, I, you guys know, 
always back the players. Well, not always back the players in, but mostly I understand that I have a bias towards players. I get it. Like, I, it's a, it's even if I'm conscious about it, I'm still. It's still going to be a subconscious bias because yeah. that's who I was. But I've I've got to say, like, I understand. Like, it's great that they're getting player funds and you know, uh, um, injury. Uh, it's fantastic. But I do think, like, I just want more clarity as to what they want. Like, money's been agreed to. A heads of agreement for the women's game has been agreed to. So that's yeah. actually different to a CBA. So you're kind of splitting hairs. A heads of agreement is what you sign before you sign the big contract. Mm. So and so often people conflate the two when they're actually – they're two different things, but they essentially mean the same thing. Yeah. Um, and so I, I just – from both parties, from both parties, I just want more clarity. I don't know I don't know what they're disagreeing on. Exactly, yeah. Like, like it's – it's strange. Like, so for example, okay, the, the international player payments. Let's say that's that's a sticking point. Surely you're not doing a media ban because of that. Like, mm. the, the international players, you know, may get paid less and then spreading the money out. Look, I understand why the Australian players may be like, well, why should we pay for the international game? That's It's not our asset. We don't own it. The, it's the NRL and the ARL and that that have a vested interest in it. We're, we're just the players. It's like almost going... It's almost like going and look. Maybe it's a separate amount of money, yep. but let's just assume it's the players' money that they're trying to take and give to the other nations. Now, look for the betterment of the game. You would say it's a good thing, but it's like me going, "All right, we're starting this other part of the business, mm. Maddie, yep. and it's going to come out of your pay to pay them." <laughs> yeah. But I own the business now. But if that part of the business goes really well, you may earn a lot of money in the future. Yeah. So you would probably go, why am I paying for that? That's a tough one to take. Yeah. It's a tough one to take. But you, you would understand it to a degree. So it's like this really gray area of yeah. like, yeah, of course I want the international game to grow. Yeah. Um, but it's just, so look, I understand there's friction in that decision because you, know, you can see why the players like, why should I pay it? Sure. But then you can see why the NRL is like, we want to grow the international game. This is the best way to do it. Um, but surely that's not the reason why they went on a media Ben. I would I wouldn't think so. That's there's like, got to be more than that's that. That's a tiny detail. Like yeah. that's anyway. Then there's the okay. So the only thing that I could get from it was two things: is there's these player hardship funds, retired players funds, so that have been agreed to. So all is agreed to, but they're arguing over who gets to control the decisions of it. Mm. Now, I I can't. There's like as I said, like you guys know, I'm bias towards a player but I surely they're not expecting to have full control over those funds like yeah. at the end of the day the NRL are the administrators and they own this business and and to my understanding the way it's set up is that the players are contractors like they're contractors to the NRL mm. and so I don't it'd be better if they're like if there's a 50 50 like we all votes or whatever or th a three two split or whatever in regards to i do think the rlpa should have definitely a say in where the money goes but i don't i, I think it's a bit much to ask the nrl to put like let's say 30 million dollars into these funds and then say oh yeah but and you get to completely choose um you know where it goes i think the nrl has the right to go well no like we're the administration of the business we get to choose where our money is directed yeah. um so that's I hope that's not the sticking point because, again, I don't think that's worth a media no. strike. Um, you know, then there's the other one in regards to... So the players took a pay cut during COVID. And, and look, I, I, to be clear, I haven't spoken to anyone at the RLPA and I haven't spoken to anyone at the NRL because I, the reason why I've done that is because I want to come at this from exactly how you're feeling as a fan. Like, what, when you're sitting there watching it, what information... You've got as much information as I've got. Um, and so anyway, players took pay cuts during COVID. And so I think during that time, the game actually made more revenue than was expected. And there was a, a, an amount that was owing to the players that they had to go and you know, try and get. And also on top of that, um, the players are currently, to my understanding, still on that agreement rate of COVID, like match payments for origin and stuff like that. Mm. And so the NRL has come out and said, yeah, yeah, we'll pay their correct amount. We'll even backdate it because we agree that you know they shouldn't be getting paid COVID amounts. We're past COVID, but that's where I that's where I kind of disagree with the NRL because I'm like, well, if you agree they are owed it, why should they have to sign a new deal to get money that they're entitled to now? That's I feel like that's a little bit unfair. Yeah. Um. So, I'm I'm really, as I said, I just want to know the details because I'm I'm quite caught in the middle with this one in regards yeah. to I'm torn as to like because I don't know 
What's the big sticking point? Mm. If well, money is all agreed to? Well, I think the RLPA, my advice as a fan would be to just, like they sent out a big media release. I've read a thousand articles. They put out that post. Still, no one really knows what the sticking point is, as you yeah. just said. They just need to list, and I know there's legally legal stuff, and you can't list everything, but they just need to list the main points of what's going on because it's only hurting them because all this is doing is fans are going to be like, oh, well, players are whinging about money when it's not about that at all. Yeah, and the NRL, you know, they keep touting this increase by 37% or whatever. As I said on the show on Hello Sports Show is that, like, yeah, for sure, it has increased by 37%, but guess how much the exact to the number, guess how much revenue has increased since 2017 when they did the deal? How much? 37%. Oh, there you go. So, yeah, so yeah. the increase is equal to how much revenue has increased. So they're, they're getting paid the same percent yep. of the total revenue, which is fair. Like, that's good from the NRL that, you know, they, they're getting paid the same percent. They're increasing it. So it's fair on both parties. So we've got that information, which is usually the most confidential information of, like, percentages, like, kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, if, the, if NRL or, or RLPA came out and said, the reason why we're at loggerheads is because there's a player hardship fund, yep. there's a retirement fund, and there's an insurance fund, and we want 50% of the votes in that. Yeah. Um, and then if the NRL said, you know, we want 100% or 25%, whatever the percentage is, and, and then if the, both T parties came out and said, and the reason we want a say in it is because X, Y, and Z. Mm. Whereas at the moment, I, I don't know what it, I just don't know. Yeah, like, they, they got to list it and they don't pad it with any words. Any jargon, just, just real simple. Exactly. Both yeah. parties, both parties. Both NRL yeah. and NRL. Yeah. And that's, I just... It's at the point now where like I'll see it on the news or I'll read about it and because I don't know, I've, I'm losing interest and I'm just like, fuck, this is just annoying now. Yeah. I, and, and, and that's like, not what it should be. It's, no. it's And when I found out that they're, I think, I'm pretty sure they're not doing interviews on Origin. Yeah, I know. That's, that, that's the one where I, I strongly disagree in regards. I understand they have to show a strong force and yeah. I, I really respect the players for all, well, it seems like they're all on board and mm. taking a strong stance and that's great for the, like that's great for the players of the future for sure. But, and I, so I would say, yep, like I can understand the club media ban, you're sending a strong message. But the difference with Origin is I feel like Origin is about the people, like you're truly, truly representing some, like a history that's deeper than rugby league. And so that's where I feel like they could give a little to show the fans, you know, we care. Yeah. We, I promise you we care. I, I, I hope they change their mind on that, I, I do. I agree. It's, ve it's very dangerous considering how much the TV network's put in as well. But also, what if Queensland win on the buzzer and Brimson scores and we can't hear from you after the game? Or Teddy or something, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, again, the origin is a different kettle of fish. I, as I said, I think that that... It's about origin is about representing where you are from. The heritage of that is so much deeper than a club. Like mm. a club is deep for sure. You know, I I understand that Broncos means so much to me. But where you're from, where you grow up, the state, like it's it's who you are as a human being. Like, and so that's where I feel like I think the RPA could get a real win yeah. if they came out and said, "Hey guys, just so you know, we are going to do." the match interviews on origin because we know it's about the states the and people. we care yep. about the people. Um, Fuck, that'd be, that'd be smart if they did that. Smart as anything. It yeah. would be so smart. And like, wh what do they lose by doing that? They actually, by doing that, they actually haven't really done anything, but they've achieved a lot. You they've know what I mean? They've achieved a lot because all of a sudden fans go, oh, mm. they are reasonable. They do yeah. care about us. So even from a, like a purely tactical standard, because they can still go back to no media after it if, yeah. they, if they want to. Yeah. But from a tactical perspective, it shows like... Sounds like they will, to be honest. I hope. Well, yeah. It sounds so obvious that they should. Yeah. But I don't know whether they will or not. Yeah, because yeah. Anyway, so... Because um, there's been some pretty, like... There's been some stuff where, like... For example, I was speaking to Benny, our producer for The Morning Glory, where they were yeah. flying down to interview Will Warbrook. Yeah. They're not even playing this week. And... And it's a face-to-face, -face, so it's like a podcast. It's not even like has nothing to do with games, but mm. because it's game day, they said no, they had to fly yes. home. And 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 like the storm, they were trying to be as accommodating as possible. And they even like apparently they even like try to reach out to RPA. And some of the RPA players were like, yeah, yeah, sweet. And but the other was like, no, no, that's un that's unreasonable to me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, that's a bit rough. So. Yeah, it's as I said, if the NRL, if the RPA came out mm. and showed me all this evidence of like. The NRL has treated us like this, like that, like this. And 
then I could be like, look, I, I understand. I really do understand the strong stance. Um, and if the NRL came out and said, we've agreed to all this and all we want is this, then I could say, then I understand like mm. where you're coming from. But right now it's just from a, f- and I want to, I want to try to as much as I can stay from a fan's perspective. Yep. Because if I go and speak to the RLPA and go, what's going on? Then immediately I'm bi- I'm biased because I've got information and then I've got yeah. to go, you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah, yeah. whereas I, if I, I keep it clear, I'm looking at it just the way NRL fans are looking at it. Um, and the, oh, look, it's just like, okay, what's the next step? Mm. If you don't get what you want, I, I just, the way I see it is this. Okay, I love the fact that there's solidarity and good on the boys for fucking really sticking together. Really, I love the fact that this strong nature has got all of these extra funds. Because we have to remember this negotiation has got all these extra funds. So they've, they've done so well for past players, players coming in. Um, but I do think when the rubber meets the road and we're talking about like more extreme stuff, I think they may have to just step back and go, we're all on a good wicket here, boys. Yep. Minimum is 150K. Now, this is not coming from a place of like, oh, you uppity footy players. Not at all. Mm. It's more from a place of like, how far is too far where you really are hurting the fan then, you yeah. know? Um, whereas like right now, outside of the origin stuff, it's not really hurting the fans. Like the fans no. don't really give a shit that much about a fucking mid-game interview. No, no. I think mid-game interview should go anywhere. But. Yeah, so <laughs> so it's not really hurting the fans that much. Yeah. Um, the origin stuff, I think, does hurt the fans quite oh, a yeah, bit. The it does. Um, Pete, like, it's, imagine... Imagine he, Cherry lifting the shield and not... Not saying anything. Not saying anything. Oh. So... Like, or imagine, like, um, like for, as a, say, a Rabbitohs fan, I can't hear from Colm Tungy. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, origin comes... Like, Colm Tungy, what if he never plays again? Not that he won't. But what yeah. I'm saying is, is like, you get this, anyway. Yeah. That, that and... Uh, not an ad for nine now, but the, the, after the... Um, Origin. The whole the post match is freaking awesome. Yeah, I, I, it's the only post match stuff I stay up for. Hundred percent. Like um, all club stuff, immediately boom, game over, X out straight away. Yeah. Um, whereas the the Origin stuff, I watched all the way till the end. I love 100%. it. Hundred uh, percent. So, yeah, as I said, oh, I, you know the RLP have made so much progress, and it's so fucking good. The boys have have been able to do that for the young generation. Yep. I love the fact that there's an 18 year old kid coming out of school going into first grade and he's getting paid $150,000 for it, you know? And I'm a player that I was working my ass off whilst also training full time. So that, you know, I would have every right to be bitter and be like, Oh fuck these young kids. No way. Like I'm happy for these young kids. Like I do think that though, in regards to that minimum wage, I hope they've set it up so that only a certain amount can get released to them. And then they keep a certain amount aside for them in a smart way. Mm. Because like an eighteen-year-old kid doesn't need one hundred and fifty grand a year. Oh, imagine, oh, imagine what you could have done with one hundred and fifty grand at eighteen. You, you, you just carry, and you haven't yeah. played first grade yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hope they do set up systems where like there's a certain budget, so the player gives the club. I don't know his living expenses, and then you know how much extra cash, and then mm. they put aside that cash for him. I think that'd be really smart. That'd be good, yeah. Because I don't think 80 year, eighteen-year-olds need one hundred and fifty k in their account each year. Bloody, no way. Um, but it's good that. They're getting that though, because you yeah. know, people. I know, like people like to compare it to normal jobs, or well, it is a normal job, but jobs that you know most people have. But the difference is, is a, it's shorter. Most most people only play. Well, the average uh, career is forty NRL games, so it's really short. Um, and also, like that's how much it generates. Like if mm. if you uh, let's say you're, I've used this example before, but if you're a top doctor in the country, let's say you're in the top four hundred doctors in the country. You're gonna be earning massive coin and for the rest of your life. Yeah. And you weren't studying to be a doctor from four or five years old. Whereas like a lot of footy players were yeah. playing rugby league week in, week out since they were like six. Um, so I've got no issue with them earning a lot of cash because oh, it's a it's a highly competitive field that they're in and they're the best of the best. And they've got what is it? Three, four million eyeballs on them during origin. They've got millions Hundreds of thousands, millions NRL. Like, that's just how it is. And they're smashing their body to pieces. F- bloody earth out. Like, not just on the field. Like, not just, oh, not just 80 minutes. Win. Yeah. Oh, the other little thing about the RPA, mm. I do agree with the RPA in regards to the, the two matches that they can just make them play two extra matches before they have to ask them. So, so Abdo is, so the RPA is saying, we want to say whether the season gets longer or matches are added. Oh yeah. And Abdo has said we we do go and speak to the RLPA once we get we play more than two matches, then mm. they have a say as to whether um, 
that whether they can, whether they do or they don't. Right. So, for example, if they take the from the season from twenty seven games to twenty nine games. Yeah. Under the NRL's model, they don't even have to ask the players. Right. Well, that happened this year. It went from 25 to 27. Exactly. And right. so I that's where I do agree with the RLPA. Imagine if your boss said in your contract, I can ask you to work for two more weeks mm. without any consultation. Mm. And not just the two, two hardest weeks of the year. Yeah. And I don't even have to ask you. You'd be like, that's a bit unfair. Like, you know, we've got a contract in place and yep. I'm supposed to work, let's just say, 40 to 50 weeks. Yeah. I should have a, let's say it's 50 weeks a year I should work. I should have a, or it's usually like 48, isn't it? 48, 48. Let's say it's 48. If you want me to work an extra two weeks, surely I should have a say in it. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? And, yeah. and maybe I maybe I should, you know, lean towards yes, because I'm trying to be a good a participant, a good employee. Yeah. But surely you should have a say in whether you are forced to work an extra oh, two weeks. Oh, 100%. Like, obviously, like if you take this here, for example, obviously a new team comes in, they have to race. And they probably, the RLPA probably would have been like, yes, yeah, sweet. Well, put it this way. If, if, they, if that went through... The NRL could add another two games on, and the, they would have. That means that's four games. Yeah. So it's a whole month of extra work in two seasons that mm. have been added on without any say of the players. So theoretically, they could just add two every year. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so that's that is. I do think I agree in regards to the RLPA. RLPA that's a bit unfair. Like that's. Yeah. We don't need to play more rugby league. The boys. Look how many injuries we're seeing. Yeah. Look how many ACLs, pec tears. Yeah. The game is so brutal. Like. I understand MMA and boxing, you know, with the knockouts and that. But honestly, rugby league is nearly as uh, physical as an MMA and boxing match. They fight maybe three or four times a year, mm. you know, yeah. as a professional. Rugby league players play every week. Yeah. Plus the training plus the every training, week. Yeah. Um, so that's where – so, yeah, look, as I said, like, I think both sides – there's no one side that's just, like, purely in the wrong. You can see where both sides are coming from. They need to get an external mediator <laughs> – that, and, and that's that's what I was about to say. Like because no one actually is in the wrong, they yep. need this mediator. External mediator, and and they both have to agree. Whatever they come up with, that's it. Yeah. No more bullshit. Because as I said, they've got their money. It's been increased by thirty seven point five percent or whatever. They, so they've got their cash. They're going to get paid a good wicket. They've got their funds. All it is really that I can tell, unless more information comes out, is about who decides where the funds go. Yep. Whatever the individual mediator says. They should. They've just got to go with it, in my yeah. opinion. Well, let's hope. Let's hope they do that ASAP. Yeah, I. I don't think it's going to get any worse. I think that they'd be crazy. To, as I said, they got the money. Mm. Sometimes you got to just st- take a step back and go. All right, guys, we've we've. Okay, like let's say they don't get everything they wanted. So, for example, the NRL wanted a trade window. They said no, nah, and the NRL said, "Okay, sweet." Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, it's the NRL aren't just purely. Yeah, they're given and taken. They're given and taken as well. So I, I do think it's going to get to a point for the RPA where they're just going to go, you know what? We've made so much ground on this agreement. We've got all these funds set up. We've got the, the bigger pay rise, even though it's equivalent the same as to what was earlier, but the bigger pay rise. Take your wins where you can get them, yep. and then we'll be smarter for the next negotiations. Mm. We'll start them earlier. We'll demand, you know what I mean? We'll demand yeah. more. So I wonder, if, I wonder if this, and this is kind of going off topic a little bit, but I wonder if this has anything to do with the fact that we still don't know when Australia or who Australia are playing at the end of the year. So is Australia definitely going to play at the end of the year? Yeah, but there's, oh, I don't know. There's no, there's no I haven't word heard of, anything about post season. Yeah, there's no, it? there's no fixtures confirmed or anything. Yeah, so wow. it's kind I mean, of strange. There's nothing. Is it New Zealand playing Tong or something like that? Yeah, there's, sorry. I'm, yeah, just, I'm talking just about Australia. Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully it gets sorted. Um, I just, yeah, but at the moment, as long as it gets sorted, it's so good how much these younger players are going to be taken care of compared to my time. And I can only imagine the boys before me, like they got mm. nothing. Yeah. They got chewed up and spat out. So the progress of how far they've come, it's amazing. So the boys should be absolutely, and, and the women should be super congratulated about that because it's just been, um, it's so good the position that they're putting the players in. But there is a line, yeah. I think. Yeah, There's yeah, a line yeah. and absolutely. We're, getting, we're getting close to it. We're very close. We're very close. <clears throat> um, all right, let's talk about last night's game. Sharks defeat Sharks defeat uh, the Tigers, uh, 36-12. Mm. Um, and also, super stats from the game brought to you by Sportsbet. Legends over there. They've also got the, the multi-tracker now feature. Incredible feature. I was Because uh, cause I had Sione Katoa two or more tries last night, which actually won. Um, it was it was great for me watching because I had that, and then I had Nico score. Yep. But then it got dis- disallowed, so it went back. Oh, then I had Nico score again, and then I just 
just needed Nicola to score, but wasn't to be. <laughs> he got close to Nicola. I know. Um, Nicola, sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, Sharks defeat Tigers 36-12. Uh, <clears throat> Tigers definitely better. Definitely yep. better than they were last week. I mean, I thought their first half was outstanding. Yeah, it was great. It was outstanding. Yep. Um, from a Sharkies perspective, 24-0 in the second half is pretty yeah. good. They opened the game 15-15 sets, which is good. Uh, again, you know, ad nauseum. I know you're sick of hearing it. This is kind of the score that you would hope that they would put on the, the Tigers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some positives, though. So we'll put all that aside. The positives... Blake Braley just he, getting better oh, and better and better. He's all he. I don't know how many line breaks he, he he had, but it seemed like he had about six. He just found himself, or maybe he just had a lot of time. He just yeah, he was he was awesome last night. He was um, creating space. Everything was was he was slowing time down. He's fantastic, Blake, Blake Braley. He is getting so and what like we talked about last week, how he's getting much more confident and around the ruck. Yeah, and didn't you see that last night? Oh. Just so good, and his defense is fantastic. I'm excited for his career. I yeah. really am excited to see where this goes because, you know, you've obviously got the Reese Robson seems to be the guy, the next guy up for New South Wales. But let's say there's an overhaul of the system. Mm. Let's say let's say Queensland whitewash the series. You'd have to say there's absolutely no one that has a a, a jersey on. You know, completely safe. Oh, absolutely. Like, I'm trying to think. No one, literally no one. Yeah. Outside of, yeah, literally, you couldn't you couldn't say a single player has the jersey a hundred percent guaranteed. No, I don't think you could either. If if you get whitewashed, that is. Now, if you come out and it's two one, and you know people stand out like, yeah, I know Payne Hass is injured, but Payne Hass is probably the closest at the moment. Yeah. To you know, Latrell to a degree, but at, at this stage, it's it's what two years now without yeah, having played. Yeah, it's not Origin. really his. I mean, it is his jersey, but it's not really his jersey because he hasn't played hasn't in two played years. In two so it doesn't years. really count, to be honest. So Neither is Tur- oh, Turbo. Well, Turbo's not, definitely not guaranteed. Yeah, so like even guys like that, you'd have to say, look, mm. look. let's be honest, like Trell. Oh, Trell and Turbo. If Trell's, they- Trell and Turbo are fit, <laughs> yeah. like very hard to say they're not going to get that oh, 100%, spot. 100%, yeah. I think it's more about sending a message to everyone in New South Wales. This is a reset. Yeah. Uh, and then you have to ask yourself, if Blake Braley keeps improving like this, mm. he may put a lot of pressure on Reese Robson. And you know what? Even if there isn't a whole wipeout, like I remember, I, I'll never forget it. We're talking at the start of the year, and Timmy said, and at the time it was one hundred percent true because we all agreed. No matter how good Campbell Graham plays, he won't even get a look in at Origin this mm. year. Obviously, things changed. Campbell just like went up and up and up. Yep. Uh, Tommy was a bit hurt, so Campbell was in the frame. Now, <laughs> like we're down to like who would have thought that Campbell Graham would be overlooked and we'd be playing with. Critter and and Brabham Best. No disrespect to them. I'm just saying, like, yeah. they weren't really in the frame at the start of the year. Yeah. So, and that and Blake Braley is way higher up the pecking yeah. order. He's just under Reese Robson. Well, so. that's why that's why I I'm so hesitant to say, you know, for example, we we're talking to Guru a couple of weeks ago, and he was saying if Moses like wins at SunCorp and comes down and wins at Thingo, mm. you just don't know what's going to happen in that year. You don't gonna. You just don't know. I, Look, if Moses had gone up and won and then won game three, um, would have been very hard to not give him a seven jersey next year. But as you just said, like, it's just super hard to know. Mm. Like, for example, who would have thought Caelan Ponga wouldn't be a fullback for Queensland? Exactly. And he may not get that jersey back. He, he probably won't. Which not, is not next year. insane. Mm. But then again, he could come out next year and kill it. Exactly. And get the jersey back. Exactly. And Reese Walsh could... Like, if Reese Walsh has a poor year next year, mm. then all of a sudden... Kalen, and Kalen Ponga is killing it, mm. then K, KP gets the spot. It's like, so it's, Origin is just so hard to like know yeah. how it's going to pan out. As you just said, like no one would have put Campbell Graham in the picture. Then all of a sudden, Campbell Graham was the only guy for the picture. <laughs> yeah. And now he's now he's like third or fourth in the pecking yeah, order. It's, it's um, wild. So, so that's why I'm glad Freddie's tried to pick a team, as he said in his own words, to win this game. Because you can't be thinking about next maids. There's so much footy in between then. Yeah. I, to a degree, you can. Well, but like, I, I, the only thing with those is like, then I, then I, like, he's gone half and half. Like, Bradman Best, for yeah, example. True. Yeah. So it's like, if you wanted experience, you put Burton in there. He's played there, mm. played really well. Anyway, we, we've fucking yeah. been over it so much. Uh, but yeah, we've, we, we totally got sidetracked. Super stats from last <laughs> night Sivitalikai, two tries, two line breaks, 181 meters, six tackle breaks, 12 tackles. Zero missed, zero missed. And Sifa, like, he's almost, he is cursed by that run of form of four or five games because this year, 2023, 
Fifth in the NRL for line break assists. Eighth in, eighth in the NRL for uh, try assists from, as a centre. Centre, yeah. Crazy. Averages averages 175 metres a game at centre, which I think is the most in the NRL. Has five tries, seven line breaks, and 51 tackle breaks for the year. But no one's talked about Siffer's year. I think it's, I think it's been criminally underrated, mm. Siffer, this year. And I see a lot of on, people online bagging him. And, of course, they're just comparing him to that couple of like amazing, amazing games last year. But he's killing it. Mm. He's he's the right. only thing is is I think he's a he's a victim of that left side curse for he's on the left side. Isn't he's he? on the left, yeah. Curse for like the sharks. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. a lot of their fans are you know frustrated with that left side defense. Defense, yeah, of course. But like the center, to a degree, it's his fault. Mm. But I never, yeah. I mean, look, defensively, read wise, maybe he's got some some yeah, like yeah. you know. But there's no perfect center. Like every. Mm. Like, I'd put it this way. I'm sure there's a lot of people listening right now that were shocked to hear those stats. Oh, I was shocked when I was... I, I thought he'd been having a pretty good year, but I was shocked even looking up them this morning. Yeah, like, they're pretty incredible. Fifth in the fifth in the NRL for line break assists, eighth for try assists. And he stands all the way out on the left. Like, and he's averaging 175 metres a game. That's wild. Unbelievable. Five tries, seven tackles, yeah, 51 tackle breaks. So for a for a quiet year, he's doing mm. bloody well. Yeah, how also, nice! How nice is that double pump that Nico? So good. No one's no one wanted to bar him on that <laughs> oh, line. Oh please! Um, which I thought I thought Toa I thought that was he should have just put his shoulder into that. Mm. Like I know you're going to get bumped, yeah. and I think he did get bumped earlier in the the game. But you just got to get yourself in front. Mm. Uh, then then no one can really have a crack here. Yeah. Whereas like you watched the, if you watched the replay last night, he, you could realize you could see that he'd gone like I've no chance here, and he just he just stuck an arm out. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, Sivitalikai, he's the sports bet super stats for last night. Uh, <clears throat> in regards to the Sharks, look, the good thing, and yes, they've had three buys, but the positive for the Sharks is they've put themselves in a position to go on a run. I'm not sure whether they will go on a run, but at the very least, they've put themselves in a position. Uh, they, you watch them and, you, and sometimes you're watching them going, wow. This is a premiership threat. When they just get when they get that smooth ball playing and Will Kennedy at the back just hitting the ball at speed, Talakai, Ramian, all of that, it's there's nothing better. Mm. But then you had to see these lapses in defense and you go, oh, against the big teams, that's gonna pay. Well, yeah. So as I said, the real positive is is sometimes as fans, we get way too caught up in the now. Like, I want a premiership right now. And we don't we we don't take a step back and go. Two years ago, you would kill to be where you are now. Yeah, absolutely. Sharkies, bloody oath. Two would. years ago, fan, the Sharkies fans would kill. Yeah. So you have to remember, rookie coach still, rookie seven, rookie setters. Ta- Talakai has been there for this is his second year. Yeah. Uh, relatively young nine. Uh, you've got Trindle coming through that will take care of more. Like when Moylan moves on relatively young-ish forward pack when you take out a Fanukin uh, and Graham if, if he retires this year. So there's a lot to build towards in the future for the Sharky. So I, I get it. You, you look at the side and you go, oh, we're just there. We're so close to pushing for a premiership. I think they may be still a season away. But as I said, the positive is they're in a position and mm. they could go on a run. They've got the team to go on a run. Um, it's just hard to like pinpoint yep. if they will or not. Yeah, absolutely. I've just looked up their draw. I think this week is going to be a very, very interesting game. Going over to New Zealand and playing the Warriors on Sunday afternoon in Auckland. They lost to the Warriors at home at the start of the year. The Warriors have been, you know, you'd give them, what, a B- minus this year? Like, been B+. Plus, B+, like, plus for like sure. Pretty good. They've, they've been awesome at home, except for that last game against South. Mm. But that was torrential conditions, like, whatever. Um, I reckon it's going to be a big, big test for the Sharkies to go over there, and, and we'll see what they're made of next week. Yeah, yeah, really big test. I um, they just, it, I just feel sorry for them because like it's kind of like they putting these big wins on, yeah, and they're still getting questioned. It's like, what else do you want us to do? It's funny, like if they if they were either the Knights or the Cowboys last week who won sixty six nil or seventy four nil, no one would have even been impressed. Mm. Everyone would have been like, ah, oh, well, we know you can do this still. So I I get it as well. Like I feel sorry for them. I'm just like you. Um, but it's the truth. It's a, yeah, it's the truth. And, and uh, you know, they're the ones that have put themselves in that position by, right. you know, struggling against top-tier sides. Uh, oh, Heinz, no try. Bizarre. Like, Bizarre. I get it. Like, I get that you can't push someone in the back. But I actually reckon it was more of an escort than anything. Yeah, like, uh, 
look, I, I get he was kind of already there and you should be allowed to chat. Like, if the ball had have dropped to the ground near him, mm. then I could have say, look, I get it because he, he didn't have an opportunity to get the ball. But it, it didn't even look like... It, even if he stayed on his feet, he, probably, he wouldn't have got no, near the was, ball. He was blocking. Because he, he, the Sharks player caught it before it hit the ground, didn't he? The tight... The Tigers, Tigers knocked it on. Oh, Tigers knocked it on. And, and then, then the shark, he caught yeah. it before it hit the ground, didn't he? Oh, probably. I'm anyway, sure, yeah. look, I, as I said, I agree with you. I understand yeah. why they did, you know, it's a push in the back, but it's just like... It didn't, did it, it didn't affect the play did at it all. really affect... Like, was he robbed of, like, a chance at the ball? I don't think so. I, <laughs> as I said, I think, if anything, Ramian got caught. It cost well, Ramian a, a chance to get And also, the ball. when I think about it, okay, like, all right, so he stopped where he was. So... Is it the player's responsibility to go around him? Shouldn't yeah. he have an, a right to push through him? Yeah, exactly. Like, unless he's contesting the ball, which yeah. he absolutely was not yeah. doing, then I don't think so. Like, so if you're, if you're stand, like, let's say you stop to jockey your ball. Yeah. Shouldn't I have a right to be able to push you out of the way? Exactly. Because you've, you're stopped. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, look. It's a I, tough one. Yeah. And, and probably by the rules, it's a no try. And I, yeah. I guess like, just like the Fafita one last week. But is it, is it, like, let's say you stop, and like we saw, is there, and we'll probably have to read the rule book, is it the attacking player's responsibility to run around mm. the person? I, it, I, I, would, I would assume that that's a penalty, that that's a penalty for escorting. Mm. It's, it's a tough if one. If he's because, not going for the ball. But he has a, the difficult one is, is he has a right to be around the ball in case the defender drops it. Yeah, true. So you can't say, because then, then you're just saying you're not allowed to run towards the ball at all. Mm. And so defending players are like, well, fuck, what if he drops it? Then I'm fucked. Yeah. So it's a yeah, real grey area. Probably need a black and white clarification yeah. on that one. Real, real grey area. I thought it should have been a try. Real grey area. Um, outside of that, in regards to the Sharkies, I thought it was good to see Toby Rudolph back. I thought yeah, he had a few good, good runs. Yeah. Um, it was uh, look. It's going to be interesting. I I wouldn't write the sharks off completely yet. I know a lot oh, of no people way. like to call them flat track bullies, and and yeah, you could make the argument because they haven't been an eight side. But it's a long look. Three weeks in footy. Like put it this way, the the Rabbitohs were like favourites for the premiership at mm. one point this year. Mm. Now they went down obviously and beat the Warriors, but no one would say that they're favourites for it. Like, no way. Well, and also it's the, what the fifth of July or something today. On the 20th of May, so six weeks ago, seven weeks ago, the Tigers put 66 points on the Cowboys. Yeah, it's a long, long season. Things happen yeah. very quickly. And if they sort their defence out, they're a premiership threat. Yeah. It's really that simple. Yeah. If they sort their defence out, they're a premiership threat. Yeah. Um, I really like the fact that they opened the game 15 from 15. It shows mm. a really good culture, that. Like a, a real good culture of like listening to the coach, doing what he asks, and then opening up, obviously, in the second half. Uh, to the Tigers... I mean, oh, my opinion still stays the same because mm. it's been years. Like, it's not like – even if they had to come out and somehow beaten the Sharkies, my opinion would still be the same. Yeah, of course. Because it's been years and years and years. But I, I do love that we saw – I mean, it's almost bittersweet though because Tommy Talao's heading to Manly. I know. And, like, he's been highly touted at the Tigers, come yeah. through the juniors or debuted at the club at the very least and, you know – Everyone sees the potential, and we fought, we saw a bit of it last night. Like just strong, strong ball running. Obviously, he's got his uh, two tries. Well, uh, second, almost had two. Yeah, almost got his second one. And you go, oh, there's that potential. There's that potential, and just about as he's maybe about to hit it, he's going to head over to Manly. Manly, yeah. Um, so that's a positive though that he's playing well. But another guy that's a massive positive is Blore. Yeah, I, th I thought I knew you'd say that. Yeah. Jeez, he was good. He's. But I think he's rumoured to be on the way out as well. Really? I, I, you know what? I saw something on Twitter. I don't know how true it is, but yeah, apparently he's he's been given permission. But I'll have to check that. It's definitely not confirmed. Mm. Um, hopefully not. Hopefully they keep him. Yeah, it's a tough one because do you want to? I want to see Blore be the best he can be. Mm. And I guess you've got to ask yourself: as has it worked out so far for Blore? I know he's been injured, mm. very unlucky with injuries, um, but. You know, he's another guy coming through was highly touted. He was he was honestly right up there with so for example, the New South Wales eighteens captain, for example, one year it was Payne Haas, the next year it was Cam Murray, the year after that it was Sean Bloor. Like that's how Wow. That's how like touted he was. He was always right up there in the pathways. Um yep. 
Yeah. So the positive for Tigers fans, let's say he's, there's no rumours that he's going to leave or whatever, we're starting to see that promise that we knew was there before he got those unlucky injury run. Like, yeah. I think he had, like, about a year of injuries. Yeah, I think he, he, he came, he played one run round at an ACL or yeah. something. So, yeah, it was but pretty But he looked explosive, mm. super aggressive through the middle, fast play the balls, hard to handle, great offloads. So that's a really good sign. Um, yeah, it's... I will say, like, it's interesting to see... I wonder whether... is. Are they struggling so much because of purely because of Appy not there? Or are they missing Brooks? Like, are they, you know, are we watching a club when we like to blame Brooks for all the bad stuff that's happened in the last few years? But is he actually making the best out of a bad situation? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like would they be even worse if he wasn't there? Well, they've, I mean, they've had a couple of, I know Appy was out at the same time, but ever since he's been out, they've been even worse. So we know Brooks can play, so... Yeah, maybe, maybe you're right there. Yeah, I and mean, then and once again, he's leaving. Yeah. Uh, the, the tough thing for the Tigers now, they find themselves in a position without a half. Yeah, I know. And Adam Dewey coming back from an ACL, unsure where he's going to play. He's definitely not a seven. And he, but he's not even going to be back till mid next year, earliest. Earliest. And earliest. So, like, they're in this really hard position where they're heading into the next season without a seven. Mm. And it doesn't look like... You know, Ben Hunts, I was shocked if he went there. Yep. There's no other – what other sevens are there on the market? I mean, your best – honestly, your best bet would go after would be to go after a guy like Cogger yeah. and throw him, you know, a four five hundred k contract. Yeah. Or, oh, my God, I've had the biggest mind blank. Who's the Sharks? Trindle. Trindle. Yeah, but if I'm Trindle and if I'm Trindle's management, if Trindle's management care about Trindle – Oh, yeah. They would say, mate. Stay in Cronulla for sure. Stay in Cronulla. You just got to wait another year max. Mm. And then you are the guy with Nico Hines, the well, Dalium yes. 7, who's only going to get better and better. Look, I don't know what the management's relationship with him. Maybe that's a little bit harsh to say if they care about him because I don't know the ins and outs. My advice, though, would be like, go on a Tigers. I don't know if that's the right the right call. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I agree. For your career, like you've stuck it out for this long. Yeah, Moylan's going to retire. There'll be a bit of money there for you. Now, look, if he gets offered bloody 800k a year, 900k a year, then then you have to weigh up. Is it worth making all that money and maybe being, you know, so under the pump it's crazy? You know, there's also a world where he goes there and goes really well. Mm. You know, Api Corusiao and him work really well together. Um, but like, I think like right now, if I was to give advice, it would be, mate, the Sharkies are on the up. You're the next guy up for Matty Moylan. Uh, I guess it all just depends on the size of the contract, obviously. Yeah, of if course. they blow the Sharks out of the water, yeah. then you go, look, I under I get it. I totally get it. And if he does go there, it's it's not like a few years ago. Like They do have a good roster now. They've got Clemmer, Bateman, Papali'i, Apicorosau, Buller. How mm-hmm. good is Buller? He's, oh, he's awesome. Mate, that the flick oh, pass, and also even the last try, like that uh, Katoa scored, mm. like the the hand eye coordination for his hand to hit the ball like that. <gasps> I know only a guy like Buller can do that. Yeah, and that that's magic. Like yeah. that is stuff that you cannot teach. You could do as many sessions as you like. You cannot teach the magic feel for a rugby league player like what Buller just did there. I know he didn't end up getting the knock knock on. And well, look, if that was last year, that's a knock on. Oh, yeah. It's because of the new rules where it's not a knock on because yeah. you don't need to control. You just need to stay in contact. Yeah, because there was an NRL.com. I don't know who did the photo, but shout out to whoever it was. It was fantastic. But mm. the Katoa's like finger was just, just on, on it. And that's obviously the new rules. Mm. Um, mate, Buller. He's, he's, he is fantastic. I, the Tigers got to keep him. They got to keep him. And if they don't... Look, I know that they've had situations before where they've paid overs, but I'm looking at this kid going, oh, mate, they got to, they got to throw cash at him. They got to throw cash at him. Now, look, I don't I don't think other clubs need to throw huge cash no. at him because but the Tigers are in such a desperate situation mm. and this guy is so much potential and playing so well. It's yeah. like they're going to have to throw a fair whack at him. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I love as well like obviously he's magic, he's he's uh his work rate's high, blah blah blah. But I just love, except for the, there was maybe one game he's a bit off, but um, how safe he is under the high ball. He gets peppered all the time, and he's he's just always there. Yeah, so Buller, got to keep him. He could learn so much under Appy. Um, and, you know, when you look at salary cap balance, yes, it is a bit of a punt, but if you want to throw him like a 600, I know he's not worth 600 yet, mm. but, like, let's say it works out. Let's say he does become the player we all think he's going to be. 
six hundred is cheap for a good fullback. Mm. Yeah, this, for this day and age. So it's like, and also in the new salary cap as well. Yeah, it's obviously increased. Mm. Um, oh, look who it is! Look oh, who it is! The guru. It is the great Gurino <laughs> Kanguru, oh. the Roo, oh, yeah. the man of the moment. Chuck us, chuck us some hats, mate. Chuck us some hats. Yeah, show us the hats. Holy shit. Mate, oh, these are these that are good that brilliant. you might turn me into a hat person. Literally, I never wear a hat. When are they coming out, the Roo? I think on Monday. They're pretty limited stock. Oh! Yeah, how it? Say it. Oh. Yeah, we're coming Monday. Pretty limited stock. So I'll... Uh, there we go. Just good on this. These oh, are great. Oh, shit. I am hot. <laughs> I am fucking hot. Thank you, mate. Cheers. So fucking hot right now with this hat on. Coming Monday, guys. Limited stock. And I'll tell you what. Whenever these have been photographed on Instagram... People get towy. So oh, you want to see what, what time? What time? Uh, I think we got 8 p.m. Monday night. 8 p.m. Give him a mic. What do you think? What do you think of the RLPA? Actually, can you, do you jump yeah, in Jump there? in the chair. You can take over. Oh. No, no, not, not the whole time. I don't want to be disrespectful to the great Matty the water boy. But while you're here, mate, and just so you know, you're not getting paid for this. <laughs> this is a freebie. All right, camera's just on you, Guru. Beautiful. How good? Uh, yeah. I can't believe it's still going, mate. Mm. I thought it'd be done and dusted by now. Mm. I mean, I said that six months ago. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like I was talking to someone last night, and from just an average fan perspective, people just have got no idea what's going on. Mm. No idea where it's going. No idea who's at fault. And I feel like, I don't know. I feel like the general media is obviously pushing a certain agenda. Yeah. Which I think is. I, th- I think, and we spoke about this at length, but like, I think that. Both parties, the vagueness has got to stop. Yep. Like both parties owe the fans a bit of clarity. So we can go, all right, what is the, what's the sticky? Because at the moment, I've read the long statement. Have you read the long statement from the Yeah, other? yeah, I had a read it's, of it, yeah. Fuck, it's long. Yeah. And I still don't know. And then I've watched every Abdo interview I can watch. Yeah. And there's a few little tidbits Abdo's given us. It, it is hard just to get the objective out of it. Yeah, it's like, like yeah. when they say to him, like, what's, what are you at loggerheads about? It's like, they just... This, it's like a non-answer to a degree. Yeah. And I understand there's like legal confidentiality for sure. I, mm-hmm. I get that. But but we already know what the salary cap is, how much their their wages are increasing. So we know that, that that's the, the nitty gritty stuff. That's the yeah. stuff that like, you know, we usually don't want the public to know in regards to its private information. So if it's over, you know, the NRL want 50-50 on like the board of decisions for player hardship funds, surely that shouldn't be private. Like who cares? Yeah, that's all. I, I, mate, to be honest, with you, I, I'm having trouble keeping up with it all. I don't know how the average person is. Yeah, and I, I, I've noticed on social media too. Ever since the media ban, people are like, "Oh, if you're going to do it, do it properly and don't play." And I'm like, "Is that what you guys want?" Mm, yeah, wow, don't do that. The players are doing you a favor by trying to do it this way so that you keep your game. Every yeah, single week. that's a strange take. Do it, do it properly. That's a, that's almost like a nihilistic. Like, almost like, just... oh, you're doing it in a coward way. I'm like, yeah. no, they're doing it in the right way for the fans. Yeah. Uh, what, what are your thoughts, before I say anything, what are your thoughts on the fact that they are not doing media for Origin, in, in the Origin game and stuff like that, post-Origin game everything? I, I don't love it, but I, if the other option is them not playing games, I love this. You mm. know what I mean? Like, it's... But because, I mean, I suppose the other thing that helped, uh, you know, it'd be worse if it was probably a decider, mm. realistically, but I... Yeah, I mean, with so many debutants and everything, I'd, I'd love to hear more, more from the guys. Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. Uh, like, I'm, I'm obviously, you know, player, got my player bias because yeah. I just think, I actually think this could be a PR win for RPA if they mm. reverse the decision on the Origin stuff and come out and say, we understand Origin is a, truly about representing the people of a state. And I just think that Origin comes around once a year. I don't rob the people. Don't rob the people of that. Yeah. You know, oh, oh, that's... I just think that that's not smart and it's unfair. That is truly unfair on the fans. Like right now, when I'm watching a game and I don't get the mid or pre or whatever into, I don't really care. But Origin, you're representing the... You, for example, if DCE lifts a shield, he may not say anything. I had not thought that through. He fully won't, eh? That's what I mean. That's unfair. The Queensland fans deserve him to say something. I had not even considered that. Yeah, is that is that what what you reckon it will be like? Well, this, it's a ban, it's a media ban. So there's no pre there's no pre game 
interviews, no yeah. mid and no post. Yeah, cross. That's interesting. That I put, I think that's too far. I really do. Do you reckon? Do you reckon if DCE, if the game was in Queensland, do you reckon he breaks that to say thanks to everyone? Or no, no, no. I, I don't would? think it has anything to do with that. No, no. No, no. I'm just wondering, like just in, in general though. Or do you like obviously? No, I, I think different. that there's, they're just trying to be full hard edge stance of like no media. We're not going to break for anything. Like we're trying to send a message to the NRL. We will not break. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't like it. I, the club stuff I can understand. Yeah. It's about sending a message and like you know blah blah blah. But the origin, origin means a bit more than just rugby league. A little bit, oh, not a bit, a lot. Is this scary? Like when you look over at like American sports and stuff, like just how many sports players will just sit for X amount of weeks. Yeah. We're not used to that, but geez, if, if like I feel like the first time it happens, if that becomes a norm, that would just be a nightmare. I personally, I've said it earlier in the podcast. If they've all agreed to the finances in regards to the salary cap, I think sitting out is way too far. Like if, yeah. if we're sitting out of rugby league coming into finals footy over who gets to choose where player funds are spended in regards to hardship in that, I don't think that that's a fair trade. Like that is mm. too far. Like I would I would understand a strike if they NRL were trying to reduce their like, – like let's say they were earning 25% of the revenue and then they came to this – you know, agreement and they were getting reduced down to 20 or 18 or whatever. I could understand that. Cause it's like, hang on a sec. We've, we've helped you generate all this extra revenue and you're literally dot, even though you're saying that we increase, we're actually reducing cause we're getting less percentage of the revenue generated. If, if that, if that was, um, that, that was the case, I could understand the harsh measures, but if it's over, you know, it's minor details. I, I just, I think it's too far. I was really hoping you'd ask me about SG Ball when I sat down. This is all a little bit over my head, if I'm honest with you, Kempi. All right, SG Ball, what's going on, SG Ball, mate? <laughs> mate, there's the under-19s on next week. Okay. The uh, under-19s, New South Wales, Queensland. Are they going to break talk- rates, do a bit of media? I hope so. <laughs> God, I hope so. <laughs> Plenty of kids to talk about there. Okay. I, might, I, might, I might venture into it on Monday, but uh, a couple of superstars playing that game. Oh, shit. Give us one. Give us give us a smoky. You've obviously got Latu yeah. that I've spoken about a little bit. Um the kid from the Raiders is going to be the fullback for New South Wales. The yep. Sh- um, Chevy Stewart, I've spoken about a little great bit name. on Monday. Great name, One Chevy. of the great names of all time. So you've got him playing New South Wales Cup at the moment, and Xavier Savage is playing on the wing. Yeah, wow. So, says so something. And I heard whispers that Savage may may potentially not be at the club. or Mate, if they're playing him on the wing in reserve grade, Chevy's playing fullback, surely the writing's on the wall. Which is, like, I feel like Savage has got so much good footy in him. So much to offer. If, if I'm a club, I'm sniffing around that. Fucking oath, I'm sniffing around that. Chuck him on the sting. Be a great <sighs> signing for so Imagine many Imagine him on the edge of like a Rabbitohs back line. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be terrifying. Pure speed like that. Be absolutely terrifying. Yeah. Um, all right. Sorry for, uh, as I said, you will not be paid for this. Um, <laughs> but I appreciate you joining the fucking Packer Up Boys. Yeah. What a debut. How good. Yeah. All right. I'll throw back to Maddie. Cheers, legends. <laughs> all right. Now on the tips brought to you by Sportsbet. Gamble responsibly, guys. You win some, but you lose more. Uh, Dragons versus Raiders. Dragons paying four bucks. Raiders dollar twenty five. Raiders. Yeah, Raiders. Benny Hunt's not playing. Uh, Eels versus the Warriors. I think there's a ton of value in the Eels here. They they won their game without Dylan Brown and without Mitch Moses initially when uh, Dejan Arcee and Madison played six and seven. Yeah, I really like Arcee as well. I reckon two thirty one. They're paying. Mm. Maybe even a sneaky 13 plus. Are they 231? Plus. Yes. So imagine what the 13 plus is. I haven't looked oh, at it. Oh, shit. But can you check the 13 plus, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that they will win 13 plus, but I reckon there's a bit of value in a 13 plus because... They're at the, home too, aren't they? They're at home. Plus, SJ, we I'm we, unsure whether yeah, SJ sure is about SJ. playing or not because I think he's got a newborn coming, so we're yep. unsure about that. I don't mind the Eels here. <laughs> well, Parramatta Eels 13 plus is paying 580. Not just a cheeky, just a cheeky double, just a cheeky little tenner, just a cheeky one. Now I know that when after the game, someone's gonna be like, "Yeah, fucking give me." Mm. If you, hey, listen, if you disagree, put it in the comment section now. Have yep. some, have some fucking yeah, balls about you. Say it before the game. Don't be the coward that comes fucking flying in after the game has happened. Um, look, I, as I said, I don't think that um, they will win thirty. Like, I don't think most likely, but. 13 plus, I think there's value there. Mm. Five bucks? 580. 580, so six bucks. Six bucks like. almost? That's value not, for not, me. Not, not, bad, not bad, not bad. Okay. Uh, I'm going Parrot Eels to win. I'm going, I'm going Warriors. I okay. saw that. <laughs> Rabbitohs versus Bulldogs. You know, like, 
at the mercy of my Instagram DMs. I'm not tipping against Rabbitohs <laughs> again, but um, I'm tipping South. But I reckon the dogs, like Tom said on DMP yesterday, that the dogs should have been higher. I totally disagree. I reckon I reckon it should be about a dollar ninety a piece. South have a lot of players missing. Yeah, but they were. But I'm pretty, tipping the dogs. I mean, I'm tipping South. I'm tipping South. I just reckon their forward pack is still relatively a bit mm. too strong yeah. uh, for the doggies one. Um, Titans versus the Dolphins. I reckon this is fucking tough as. This is so tough. Because Titans are missing Tino, for Fafita, yeah, Maui. You know what? Rimo. Dolphins, even 13 plus, might be a bit of value there. Mm. I think I think I tipped Dolphins on Monday. I can't even remember, to be honest. Yeah, um, I can't remember, but I'm going Dolphins now. I think now. Dolphins, yeah. Going Dolphins now. Uh, don't forget, guys, buy Origin tickets. We have been speaking about Origin. There is absolutely... Mm absolutely a lot to go and watch like there is so much it's got guys debuting for new south wales mm. queensland potential whitewash the last one was 2010 we're talking 13 years ago yeah whitewash has never happened i think it's only been four in the history or something or eight yeah, it's, not, it's not single sure. digit numbers not, not a lot yeah not a lot think about it the eight in a row side the yeah. greatest ever rugby league side ever assembled yeah did it once and on the flip side the new south wales team in 2021 who set a record couldn't even do it couldn't even do it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think as well, if you haven't been to an Origin game or, you you, or you're it. friends with someone or your partner or whatever, like I took my girlfriend last year and she was like mesmerized by the game day experience at a core stadium. Yeah. So if you can, get out and there. And the it's brutality. Awesome. Oh, it's the game itself is great. The game itself, I'm telling you right now, it, there's nothing like it in the entire world. I've been over to like El Clasico's Barcelona versus Madrid and don't get me wrong, that was fucking phenomenal but origin is different there's a yeah. different feel to it a different um so yeah make sure to take 59 dollars for adults 50 dollars for kids and concession and family bundle 165 um also watch exclusively on nine now make sure i actually got a few messages over, over the the last few days going Kempi loving nine now because you can watch the ashes and uh, a bit yeah. of rugby league perfect setup so nine now you can download the app or you can watch on your web browser um yeah, I think that's it today. That's it. I think that it. We are done. And Dar said, grab a case of bloke beer, the best in all the land, the beer of rugby league, and it's for blokes that turn up for their family, mates, and good times. And as usual, I'll go and fuck myself. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, visit gamblinghelponline.org.au.